Howdy, Heroes Hearth. This is Kyle Ferguson from Into the Nexus Podcast, and I'm here to talk about the new weather anomaly coming to Heroes of the Storm with the new season and the release of May. Now, there's been a lot of misinformation about this anomaly, but it is quite mysterious. We don't have a lot of the raw numbers from Blizzard, hence why people have been saying that this is an RNG random number generator event. It's not that random. We just need to dig in and figure out what's going on with these individual weather events. You're also not wrong to feel like this is different from the previous anomalies. XP orbs and tower aggro were all about making the game clear or making it feel good when we got XP or when we were defending a tower. But look at the words that Blizzard has used for this anomaly, bringing a variety of fun weather effects to the game. This is meant to be fun. This might last a season. This is theming. This is not about game information. The heroes devs want to mix up the maps, but these maps are very particular as to which weather is on which map, and we need to change our playstyles to take advantage of these. You do want to win, don't you? There are three types of weather, all that obey basic rules. Rainstorms, snow flurries, and foggy mists. Each of these are activated at the beginning of the match, lasting about 2 minutes to 2 minutes 30 seconds. Then there's about a 2 minute, 2 minute 30 second break, where it begins again for 2 minutes to 2 minutes 30 seconds. This means that when the game starts at negative 34 seconds, the first instance of weather will be done around 2 minutes. The second instance of weather will start around 4 minutes 40 seconds. And the third instance of weather will start around 9 minutes, 10 seconds, and so on, continuing until the game ends. These, of course, are all estimations as we don't know the actual randomized times from Blizzard yet. Each of these give buffs in the positive. If they were debuffs, you can imagine that we all would avoid fighting. And with these timings, they seem to be inactive right around the first objective on most maps. There are 12 maps in the ranked rotation, so the weather has divided our maps into groups of four. These maps will always have that particular weather setting. This text at the bottom only references other battlegrounds, which is Cursed Hollow, or Brawl modes. Those will have random weather effects. As this weather turns on and off, you will know if it is active because the graphics of the weather are out on the field, as well as there's a symbol at the top of the screen right below the time that is indicating that it is currently active. You can hover over it for additional information. It's also worth noting that both teams will be receiving the weather buffs at the same time. No team will have a buff while the other team doesn't, though some of the effects are dependent on level. Hanamura, Tomb of the Spider Queen, Towers of Doom, and Battlefield of Eternity will all have foggy weather, and it allows heroes to enter a bush and gain stealth after 1.5 seconds. Stealth lasts for 40 seconds until attacking, using the ability, taking damage, or until the fog clears. That's very important. The second the weather ends, the effect ends. If you are currently stealth, shielded, or under the storm buff, and the weather stops, it'll be stopped in its tracks. This stealth works exactly like our stealth characters. If you stand still, you'll become unrevealed. When you're moving, you have a stealth silhouette. This is active for that two full minutes to two minutes 30 seconds, and anytime you enter a bush, you can gain this benefit. This stealth does not enter stealth modes. This does not allow you to switch forms in Valera, for instance. Now we're gonna be doing some theory crafting with this anomaly. It's worth noting that this weather doesn't last all the time. It turns off. When we talk about a hero benefiting from a particular effect, there will be downtime in that effect. We haven't had map particular picks for a long time. Our solo lane is mostly dependent on a rock, paper, scissors, bruiser matchup. Could these weather effects drastically change the heroes we want to take into these spheres? So on the left side of the screen here, I have heroes that might benefit from stealth. In the middle, I have heroes who have reveal abilities. And on the right side are heroes who probably won't like their enemies stealthing in and out all the time. Up top here, immediately you can see I have Diablo twice, because it's hard to imagine if Diablo benefits more from making a stealth engage, slamming an enemy stealthy Diablo, that's pretty spooky. Or is Diablo going to suffer 
because he has to flame stomp and try to knock people out of stealth in order to make those engagements. Tomb of the Spider Queen is a great map for Diablo, but if everybody's sneaking around, he's going to have a hard time right-clicking them. Dahaka is in bushes all the time. He might like some stealth. Clearly, the stealth will benefit anybody who likes to make ganks or get picks, like Garrosh. But it'll also benefit those heroes who need to get close in range to perform some of their isolating abilities like Stitches or Uther. And if you have high gankiness, if you can perform a quick kill like Alarak, Kerrigan, or Maiev can, then you might benefit from this as well. Characters like Lili, who have to actually be in target of range to use things like winds, are gonna not have any targets for that. Rainer will actually have to hit his penetrating round in order to knock someone out of stealth. Otherwise, he can't right-click them. So some of our right-click heroes might suffer on these maps. Zagar is highly gankable. Is Nova upset that they've given away stealth? Kind of representing all stealth heroes here. Is her power pie ruined because so much of it is in her stealth abilities? If people are getting stealth, Nova is therefore less powerful. Does Sammy have to go Bladestorm in order to knock people out of stealth? Do people get away from Sammy too easily because he can't right-click them? This is forcing Sammys to go down a path they normally don't like to take unless they're forced into lane clear. None of these hero lists are going to be all-encompassing. We simply don't have time for that. These are to give you ideas about the heroes who might benefit from these particular weather anomalies. Next up, and a bit more complicated, is the snow, snow flurries. Snow is accumulating on heroes, granting a shield every 0.5 seconds, stacking to a maximum. Shields last until destroyed, or until the snow stops. The interesting thing about this anomaly is that it's based on level. The team with the higher level will have a better shield. Just like Muradin's healing, you have to be out of combat for about 4 seconds before the shield starts to accumulate again. Both the amount of shield per second and the maximum of the shield increase with that level. To give you an idea, around level 13, this is a 47 shield per second, maximum at 373. Our Snow Flurry maps are Alterac Past, Cursed Hollow, Infernal Shrines, and Volskaya. Once again, the windows of these weather effects are the same. So what we're talking about is shields, and lots and lots of heroes benefit from shields. The shield is individual for each character, so if you have a Lost Vikings or a Misha and Rexar, they're both getting shields up to this maximum amount. Deathwing is unstoppable and untargetable by friendly abilities. He doesn't benefit from stealth. He doesn't benefit from the rainstorm, but he does get a snow shield on him. And he has armor. You can see at the bottom here, I have a huge block of characters that have armor. If you have armor under a shield, your shield is more effective than your opponent's shield. What about Varian? Varian has an anti-shield talent, Shattering Throw. It's a little bit overkill for such a small shield, but could that be an edge on our snow maps? If a hero has frequent poke, like Junkrat, Hanzo, Raynor, they can interrupt. Whenever you receive damage, just like Muradin's healing, you will have to wait that four seconds before you start accumulating a shield again. So if you can poke frequently, you can keep the shields from accumulating. Murky, he, he, he has low health, he's gonna have more health. And that goes the same for our dive characters, like Illidan, Zeratul. What about Zul'jin, hanging out at low health, but now can get a passive shield? It's interesting to think about our mage characters, who are a little not quite in the negative here. If you are a skilled mage, you can poke every four seconds. But if you're not a particularly great mage, and the only thing you ever hit the enemy with is your blizzard on Jaina, that's a 15 second cooldown. By the time you have another blizzard, the enemy will be sitting on another max point shield. What about Cho'Gal, who counts for two heroes, but is getting a single shield? What about Malfi and Leoric, who deal percent based damage? Percent based damage is absorbed by shields. If you deal 20% of a hero's health over time, that's not 20%. Some of that was absorbed by the shield. What about poison characters? If you poison a character greater than 4 seconds, that shield will start to accumulate. The dot does not register as a hit. They have not taken damage in that time. What about our sneaky characters, Nova and Valera, who want to get a really quick pick, but an enemy has bonus health on them. Our rainstorm is the most extreme of these, and is going to have the most particulars to it. It's also the most scary of them all, for those of you who are worried about the randomness of the effect. A rainstorm periodically grants all heroes, all heroes remember, at the same time, enemies and allies, 25% movement speed, and causes them to deal 67 damage per second 
to nearby enemies last eight seconds. This is over the course of the weather effect at that two minute, two minute 30 mark. This works just like a Rhaegar shield. It deals the 67 divided in half at 0.5 seconds. If a Rhaegar shield puts a shield on you, you have two shields. This does not nullify the Rhaegar shield. The first lightning strike is always at the 24 second mark, which is fascinating because that's basically when the two lanes come together. Or if one team can clear faster, that's when you can use this 25% movement speed to rotate to your nearby lanes. Mounting up is 30% movement speed. 25% movement speed walking, you can still get to the lane before any XP is lost. Is Blizzard trying to teach us to rotate away from the middle lane? Or are people going to see lightning shields and movement speed on themselves and just battle it out for that entire 8 second duration? The second lightning hits around the 50 second mark but can be up to 55 seconds. The third lightning strikes around 120, but there's always this five second wiggle room on them. And then because the rain can end early, there may not be a fourth lightning strike, but that would happen around one minute 53. So these are predictable moments. If you know these timings, you can take advantage of them. Our rainstorm maps are Braxis Holdout, Garden Terror, Sky Temple, and Dragonshire. With quick match and unranked maps, being Warhead Junction and Blackheart's Bay. Of all the weather effects, this feels like the one most likely to be balanced and changed over the course of the season. It messes with quite a number of things. Let's take, for example, a mystery character like Johanna. Johanna gets 25% movement speed and a lightning shield around her. That means she can condemn more people. That when they are condemned into her, she's dealing damage. But on the same side, everyone she condemns has a lightning shield and movement speed as well. So do they run away just as fast from the Condemn? Do they all get condemned in, but now there's multiple lightning shields on Johanna and she gets killed because she takes too many lightning shields? What about Thrall? Who likes being in melee? He has to be in melee to do his auto attacks. These movement speed effects do not stack. A 40% movement speed will nullify a 25% movement speed buff. If you have a 15% movement speed buff, you'll get the 25 from the lightning. So Thrall's Wind Fury at 30% movement speed isn't giving him that much of a bonus anymore when both sides are moving at 25% movement speed. And same thing if Thrall runs into an enemy, when normally they'd be scared not dealing damage running away from him, instead they're all doing lightning shield damage. So melee assassins in general might suffer here. Characters that go for quick picks will be fine, like Garrosh, Diablo, and Taunt Varian. They go in, they get one character, and they get out. They're done. Tracer as well. What about characters who nullify spike damage? If you dive in Johanna and are absorbing all those lightning shields, Medivh, Zarya, Uther armor can help you out. Tyrael shields or sanctification. What about D.Va using defense matrix while everyone's dealing damage to each other? And of course, these lightnings are hitting all targets at the same time, so Lost Vikings gets three lightning shields. What about Genji, who knows his times well, jumps on top of an enemy team who can't stop themselves from dealing damage to him every 0.5 seconds? and he deflects. What if Genji suddenly has a surge in popularity on these four maps because he can deflect? If you have to skill shot, you might have a hard time. Mages. What about Kel'Thuzad on Braxis, a popular map for him? Everyone's moving 25% faster. What about Chromie, who has long loadups in her animations? Like to stand in the back, everyone can charge her down. Imperius has a rather long Q animation. What about our sleeps? If you are hit by lightning shield, you wake up targets. So Mal'Ganis, during these windows of lightning, can't effectively sleep targets. They will wake up due to the lightning shield. Same goes for Ana. What about our characters that want to sit on top of the enemy backline? Yorel jumping on four people that have lightning shields. Butcher going for that one target but touching that many lightning shields. Deathwing landing on top of a team. Sammy is a particularly sad case here. Only the real Sammy gets hit by lightning shield. This means that during the lightning, you'll always know which Sammy is the correct one. Even if he swaps out or uses his illusion split, it'll only be on the real Samuro. But is mixing up things so bad? Have we just been enjoying Blizzard giving us new tools to learn the game, ways to improve the game, and now they want to do something for fun? Is that an awful thing for a single season? Does this help define Heroes of the Storm away from the other MOBAs? That's for the community to decide. 
but I want you to put away your preconception that this is RNG. You just have more to learn. If you like the anomaly, comment below. If you don't like it, tell me why. I was Kyle Ferguson. Don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out here at Heroes Hearth. Ring that bell as well, and I'll see you soon with more Learn to Play content for Heroes of the Storm.